guys, Jake here, and today I've noticed something recently, and that is in the arcade racing game community, usually sim racing games and the sim racing community aren't really brought up at all, and vice versa exists for the sim racing community. For the past several years, I've been a big fan of arcade racing games as well as sim racing games. I grew up with arcade racing games when I was younger, like, you know, most other people did that are into racing games now. But I've also recently got into sim racing games and realized there's a lot to love about them. However, I do see a lot of sim racing fans try to crap on arcade racing games and arcade racing fans try to crap on sim racing games. As someone who's a fan of both, I'm going to try to explain the differences of both of the genres and the impact it has on both of their communities as well as talking about what I like and dislike about each kind of racing game. I think this should be quite an interesting one since I don't see stuff like this brought up all that much. And as my audience is more toward the arcade side of racing games, I'd really like to give some commentary on sim racing games and maybe make, make some more sim racing videos in general as I really enjoy it. That's enough of the talking. All right, let's get into it. Sometimes when I hear a person who likes arcade racing games talk about sim racing games and if they don't like them, it's usually because of one or two reasons. The first reason being one, that they think they look boring, or two, that they seem intimidating or too hard. And I believe this is just a different interest. Of course, there's many fans who overlap this kind of thing I'm going to talk about, but I believe in sim racing, usually you're playing it if you want to drive a car, and in, say, something like Need for Speed or Forza, you're playing it because you want a good video game. And of course, there's plenty of overlap here, but this kind of core direction and change of interest is relevant in a lot of things about these games, actually. Arcade racing games are focused a lot more on, say, art direction. Things like music and sim racing games don't really exist, sometimes on the menus, but even that's kind of rare. Music mid-race doesn't really exist, and when it does exist, it gets highly criticized like Project Cars 3 did. Meanwhile, in arcade racing games, music is almost a requirement. It's a big part of why a game could be iconic. Arcade racing games on many times are focused on more of an overall game experience, so this includes many features with different game modes and car customization and more things like that, while a lot of sim racers are focused solely on the driving experience, and these directions or interests for the game cause a lot of different pros and cons. As I talked about earlier, sims I think focus more on the driving experience and the driving physics overall. And yes, despite what a lot of people think about sim racers not looking interesting or looking boring, I think they do have more engaging and immersive driving than pretty much any arcade racer out there. When I play a sim racer, I'm just way more on edge than in any arcade racer, and that's a good thing. That's not a thing to say about that the game is hard, but more so just that the game somewhat actually feels like I'm driving. Now. The downside of solely focusing on a driving experience is that everything else is kind of dead. And I think even plenty of sim racing fans know that the atmosphere in a lot of sim games feel dead. For me, the circuits are one of the real highlights of Grid. They look the part and critically they feel alive. They have an atmosphere and that's something that's missing from every hardcore racing sim I've ever played. That was from Chris Hay. He's a great sim racing YouTuber and he was invited to play Grid 2019. That was his some of his first impressions, and it is true, Grid, which is more of an arcade racer, but still focused on tracks, easily gets the atmosphere much more nailed down than any sim racer has. And I think that lack of atmosphere draws a lot of people away from sim games that are used to arcade games, because arcade racing games focus on the atmosphere and a lot of times get it working really well, get it looking really good, and in sim games, plenty of them just look kind of lifeless if you look at stuff like R Factor or Vanilla Assetto Corsa. Meanwhile, something like Grid, like Chris Hay mentioned, has way, way more atmosphere and feeling of being on track. And like I said, Grid 2019's direction is on being a racing game, not a racing sim. So it doesn't solely devote its attention to just realistic driving physics, it works on things like trackside detail and atmosphere as well. And quite honestly, I think it's a bit contradictory. I would think racing simulators would also capture the feeling of being on track, 
but racing simulators pretty much focus only on physics, not on graphics or on track atmosphere, and I would absolutely love to see that improved in sim racing games. And now, onto my second point, why I think people are hesitant to try sim racing games is intimidation or seemingly high difficulty. And now, I will admit, sim racing is, I think, inherently harder than arcade racing solely because of the device used. For sim racing, you're gonna wanna use a wheel always. That's what sim racers are made for. Yes, you can play most of them on the controller, but you're not really getting the real experience. They're all designed for a wheel. Most people use them with a wheel. One of the ways these two genres are so different is because they use a completely different device, which also creates completely different mechanics. It's much easier to get tired of playing a sim racing game solely because you're getting a lot more physical exercise. But honestly, the more difficult mechanics and the more the more of a workout you get, honestly, I really enjoy. And it kind of saddens me how a lot of people equate realistic driving to not fun. I will say one thing though. I think driving in Sims are actually harder than driving in real life. Driving in Sims usually feel a lot tougher. There's a lot more force. It's a lot less smooth than a real car. It feels a lot bumpier in general. However, this can depend on a few factors, such as force feedback settings, the wheel you're using, which I'm using a lot of G920 in this case, and the car you're driving. I think that third one might be quite important because in real life, it's a Toyota 4Runner, and in the game, it's GT3 cars. Needless to say, I'm not too much of an experienced driver myself either, but I'm talking just from my own experience. And who knows, I could, I could very well be inaccurate about that whole statement and maybe I just need to adjust my force feedback settings. And I think another way sim racing could look intimidating to outsiders is parts of the community, actually. Of course, there are your elitists, which of course bleed out and you kind of hear people talk about and all that stuff. But also, the sim racing community is generally older and more sophisticated than the arcade racing game community. And that's not to say, oh, the sim racing community doesn't have any fun, or, oh, the arcade racing community is a bunch of kids. But I'm just talking about general demographics from what I see in terms of usually like popular YouTubers and the people interested in them. And of course, there are your sim racing YouTubers that do have fun and silly spirits in them like Jim, like Jimmy Broadbent or maybe Gamer Muscle. But for the most part, the sim racing community doesn't have people as absurd as Strip Hippo or Craptastic Jack that just go crazy in their videos sometimes. And that's not a diss to either community, it's just different types. Different types of great things actually. But I think younger people who do prefer the more silly laid back video style and they kind of see that sim racing is usually taken by an older audience and is taken also by a more sophisticated audience and they might see elitists and they might see you know crazy setups and, and, and see like oh wow this is just taken up by a bunch of crazy 40 year olds and might just turn their minds off from it. I've actually seen that a few times. And to me, this intimidation is kind of disappointing as I really enjoy sims and sim driving and you know I tell people that are more in, into arcade racing games, hey you should try a sim if you got a wheel dude, they're a lot of fun and once you try them, you won't want to go back. But they never really get to setting up their wheel because that can also be another intimidating part is you know having to drag your device out every single time you want to play unless you have a dedicated cockpit which not that many people have because they don't have the room or the money for it. Trust me, I would love to have a dedicated cockpit, but my room isn't big enough. And you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure if I did have one, I would be on there all day. So overall, I think intimidation can be a thing that kind of draws people away from simulation racing games. However, there are more realistic racing games that kind of fall in the middle between simulation and arcade. Man, I wish in life there was just something in between an arcade racing game and a sim racing game. I, why can't anyone make something like that? Oh wow, cool, what's this? Holy crap, they do exist! What the hell is this? Games like Forza and Gran Turismo are where the arcade and the sim communities kind of meet in the middle. These games obviously look more like a sim, like a track racer, but have better graphics like an arcade racer, as well as more unrealistic handling. These games have quite a wide appeal and they've sold very well. Gran Turismo 5 was actually one of the top selling games on the PS3. 
So it clearly shows that track racing games are definitely popular. They just need to be a bit easier to get into and then they kind of take off like a rocket. As these games meet in the middle, there's still a bit of commentary from far sides of both groups of, oh, it's too arcadey or, oh, it's too boring. I, there's still some of that that exists, but for most of the community, these games meet their demands quite well. I mean, maybe except some of the most recent Forza Motorsport games, those have kind of fallen apart, but hopefully the franchise will be back on its legs this year. And these games overall aren't intimidating to get into, but they have some of the uh, mechanics and more motorsport and track feel that the sim games have. And these are actually really fantastic games in their own right. So I covered the pros and cons of arcade and sim racers and tried to discuss why it might be intimidating to get into sim racing, why not everyone would be into one thing or another. And I just overall just tried to give this topic a bit more discussion as you know, for three years now, ever since I got my wheel, I've been a big fan of sim games as well. And I hang out in a lot of places that revolve around arcade racing games. I never really see much people into sims that much. And I always wondered why. So I hope this video can spark a bit of discussion on that, just because, you know, I'm kind of interested. Everyone likes what they like, and honestly, I recommend playing either one. They're both great genres of games in their own right. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. Do you like sim games more? Do you like arcade games more? What are your experiences? Stuff like that. I really want this video to start a bit of discussion. I really want to hear your guys' thoughts in general. Anyway, that was about it for this video. This is probably one of my favorite videos I have made in quite a while, or probably ever. And that's about it for now. I'll see you guys later.